Yo, 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 what's going on guys? It's Hens back with another video. In today's video, I'm going to be kind of going over, you know, some of the best filters to, to look at to make coins. Um, the first thing that I want to say is that a lot of people in my Discord have been asking, so I've been trying to help you guys as much as I can. But for those of you who aren't in the Discord, please, please, please join the Discord. The link is in the description down below. Uh, it's going to help you so much be able to make coins. Um, and you know, you're going to, you're going to double your coins very quickly because there's a lot of people in there that know what they're doing that can help you out. So I would highly recommend joining the Discord, link in the description. Uh, it's free to join. It's not like a paid Discord or anything, it's free. Uh, we're more than happy to help you out. So join the Discord, link in the description. Also drop a like and subscribe. But let's get into this. So the first precedent that I wanna set is that if you have less than 100,000 coins, cause you know, you just finished building all your team of the years, you spent all your coins, all your fodder, your whole collection, you're drained. You have nothing left. You have less than 100,000 coins, you have nothing in your collection. What do you do to start? Well. The first thing that I want to say is that you absolutely, without question, need to be taking tradable rewards from rivals and putting your HUD champs collectibles into packs. Uh, and the best packs to make, probably to make those coins back, is either the Mega, Mega Players Pack or you're going to want to go for Ultimate Packs, okay? Those, those are the two options. The Mega Players Packs are guaranteed coins. You, you guaranteed get about thirty-five to 40,000 coins per pack from those. Whereas, or maybe not 35, maybe maybe 30k guaranteed from those packs. Um, and then the ultimate packs, you're getting guaranteed 20k, but you have the potential to make a lot more coins from than that. Um, and the the chance of you pulling something good is higher than if you're opening Mega Players packs. So that's what I'd recommend to you guys. I would recommend taking tradable rewards and sending your high champs collectibles into packs because that's how you're gonna get your initial jump start of coins. So now once that's done, um, and and for the record. For those of you guys who are wondering, I only take tradable rivals rewards. I would recommend almost never taking untradable rivals rewards unless you have like laws in my Discord. He's got like 26 million coins. He can take untradable all he wants. He doesn't really need to make, you know, 100k, get a get a big pull and make 100k from from rewards. He can take untradable and he'll be perfectly okay with that. But for most of you, I would highly recommend taking tradable rewards um, and, you know, sending your HUD champs collectibles into packs. Okay. Now, to start, uh, let's say you're you're at or around a hundred thousand coins to two hundred thousand coins, and you you want to start making coins right away. Well, the first thing that you're going to want to be doing is coming over here and setting your league to NHL, setting your buy now range to say a thousand coins, um, and you're going to want to go all the way to the 59th minute, and you're going to see cards like this pop up. You're going to buy now. He's probably going to be gone already. He's not. So then I'm going to go auction item, and I'm going to list him for twelve hundred coins. Or however many coins you think you want to sell them for, um, you can you can check the price of their their teams um, and see what they're selling for. But as you can see here, there's a lot of Chicago players. The reason you don't want to be buying Chicago players is because there's only like two or three Chicago players between the overalls of 80 and 82, and you need 80 plus cards to put into this to the team builder set. And there's really like the the 80 to 82 overall Chicago Blackhawks cards. They sell for like 3,000, 4,000 coins. So it's the most expensive one to make, which is why the 79s and blows are very hard to sell. Whereas these other teams, as you can see, there's very few of these other teams that pop up and you could absolutely buy these guys and relist them. So that's what you're going to want to be doing. This is very grindy. It takes a long time. You're going to be making like less than 200 coins per card that you buy on the market and takes forever. Uh, and you're just going to need to keep doing this over and over and over and over again. It's going to take hours. But this is the most guaranteed way to make coins when you don't have a lot of coins. Um, this is the best thing to do. I would highly recommend doing this. Um, and it, it, it really is a great method to make coins. Like this card for 900, that's a great buy. I'm going to buy him up. Hopefully he hasn't sold yet. He hasn't. I'm Dylan Gambrel. I'm going to list him for 1,200 coins again. And boom, I made, you know, 250 coins off that card uh, after tax. And that's what you're basically going to be wanting to do. Rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat until you get up to the two, 300,000 coin mark where you can really start looking at bigger cards. So the next thing that you're going to want to do, say you, say your coin limit is 300,000 co coins. Now, uh, you have 300,000 coins to work with. You're going to want to set your, your, uh, your buy now range to 300,000. And you're going to want to scroll all the way to the 59th minute. This is the first method. I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to show you an example. You scroll all the way to the 50th. Oh, sorry. You have to set your level to gold too. My bad. Um, now you're going to scroll all the way to the 59th minute and you're going to start sniping cards. If you don't know how to snipe cards, the most efficient, there's two ways that you can do it. The first way is scrolling the pages like this. Um, now, if there's a lot of traffic on the market, 
this this will take a long time because it takes a long time for the screen to refresh because there's so much server latency because so many people are posting at the same time. So instead, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go on a card, press place bid. Once you get to this screen, you don't press anything. You just press circle to back out and it refreshes the page. This this method is faster than scrolling the pages, but um, you know, you don't necessarily get the same, like you, you won't get the same results. Cause if say this card was the 59th minute card, you, you're going to want to be scrolling the pages because you don't know if this see now, as you can see, the card moved over to this page, the Yossi moved over to this page. So now the 59th minute method is going to be, you know, on this card here because Yossi was the last one. I don't know if that made any sense. Hopefully you guys understand what I'm saying, but there are certain scenarios where you're going to want to be scrolling the pages, but that's minute. Mostly focus on doing whatever method works best for you. I personally do the place bid method, uh, and that's what I'd recommend for you guys. But you're going to go all the way to 59 minute and learn the prices of cards. You're going to want to sit there for about 20 minutes, not buying anything. You're just going to want to keep refreshing, see what cards pop up and what cards instantly sell. That's how you're going to learn what the best prices for cards are. Alternatively, you can go through each, you know, MSP set and check the X factors and, you know, take a mental note of what they're going for so that you can snipe them. But the best way to learn is just through trial and error. You're just going to want to sit there. You're going to want to learn the prices and that's what you're going to want to be doing when you're at about 300,000 coins. When you get past 300, there's a, there's another method that you can do when you're at around 300,000 coins and that's going to be just sniping fodder. So anything from 83, uh, you can go all the way up to 88 now because 88s are in sets. And you're just going to want to be sniping these cards um, at, you know, the best price that you can get them for um, at the 59th minute. And you're going to want to be doing the same thing. But this this one just has a smaller scope and you know that you're focusing mostly on fodder rather than focusing on all the cards, you know, MSPs and all that stuff. And it's a little bit easier to snipe these cards because you're going to see the new ones that pop up. And usually the people that are doing just the gold filter they're not really looking for fodder they're more so looking for like the bigger cards like you know the sean derseys and the caden prices and stuff like that so that's what i'd recommend there once you get up to a coin total like me you can start looking more into investments um and the best way to look at investments is to learn a card that you want to buy to put in your team that's the best thing i'd recommend for me i want to buy a team of the year card um I want to try one of the woman cards out. I already have Knight, so I want one of the other ones. So I've been monitoring cards like Heisey. I've been monitoring cards like, um, you know, who else? Uh, Fillier I've been monitoring. And you just want to see what these price, the prices on these cards are. And you're going to want to pull the trigger when you think that they're a pretty good price. See, even this Heisey for 725,000 coins is not a terrible price. But I do think she has room to go lower because she didn't instantly sell. So... Um, if I see one for a price that I like, I'll buy that card. I'll use it in my team while holding on to it because when she goes out of packs, she's going to get really rare and it's going to be a lot easier for her price to go up with rarity. So you're going to be able to sell her for more, uh, you know, once her supply starts to dry up and that's kind of what you're going to want to be doing. You can do this with, you know, the current MSPs. You can do this with past MSPs. You can do this with any of the rare cards in the game. Um, I've been looking also at this um, collection. Sorry, I went to the wrong filter there. I've been looking at this 89 rated Nations of Hockey Barkov to play on my fourth line. Um, and, you know, I've seen them for pretty good price. Um, I don't even see any on the market. There's not even any on the market right now. Um, but, you know, they, they come up, they pop up at, at good prices. If you like the price, you buy them, you put them in your team, you check the market, you know, after every game, every couple games. If you see that there's none on the market or if you see that they're, you know, they've gone up in price, then you're going to want to list them. You can get off the game for that hour that you list them. If they sell, great, you made coins. If not, then boom, you put them back in your team and you keep playing the game uh, and you work the you work your coins that way. You're just letting your coins make coins by themselves while also using the fun players that you want to use. So... Hope this video helped you guys out. If you did enjoy, oh, as you can see already, one of the uh, the players sold, um, the Philip Heedle sold. So yeah, with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.